Hi everybody, this is Katina again and today our topic is the importance of staying connected with family and friends. I'm going to speak with you about our body's reaction to stress and specifically I'm going to be speaking about the autonomic nervous system and the understanding that polyvagal theory gives us about the autonomic nervous system. Our emotions, the way we feel, trigger responses in our body. And when we're experiencing stress, the health of our body is affected. And polyvagal theory talks about a range of responses to threat, basically three responses to threat. Our newest response to threat is called social connection. And when we can feel safely connected with others, and for many of us, it's with other human beings. For a lot of us, it's also that safe sense of connection that we have with our pets, with our dogs and our cats. It impacts on our physical and emotional health. So this branch of the vagus nerve, this response to threat, social connection, when we're in this state, our immune system is healthy. Now, isn't that important with what's going on with COVID-19? Feeling safely connected improves our immune system. In this state, we feel normal happiness, openness, peace and curiosity about life. So an invitation to think about how you're finding peace and curiosity about life. I'm still working with people and it's just really interesting to hear how people are structuring that into their lives. A lot of people are experimenting with recipes. One family I spoke with, they do a lucky dip every day. Each member of the family is putting ideas into a box of, of fun things that they can do throughout the day. She was happy for me to share that with people. So think about what you're doing to create peace, openness and curiosity into your life. Even in this time, it might be more challenging. It's certainly possible. In this state, we're able to sleep well, to eat normally. When we're speaking with people, our face is expressive. We're able to emotionally relate to others. We're able to understand and listen to others and our body feels calm and grounded. So remember, if we can stay in this state, we're doing positive things for our health, physical and emotional health. Our next oldest response to threat is the fight or flight response. So when we're experiencing danger in the environment around us and we're being bombarded with the news on social media about the threats and the threats are real. There's an impact on our health, what happens in our body. So what happens is cortisol and other hormones are released in our body there might be a, speak, a spike in our heart rate. There's those feelings of anxiety, fear and anger. Our facial expressions will demonstrate fear and anger. Our digestion slows down. Our sense to run away perhaps, to punch someone, to react physically in some way could be heightened when we're in that state. Our stomach might feel painfully knotted. So there are implications, again, for our health. And also when we're in that state, there are implications for the way we're engaging in relationships with people. And being in that state, it's very difficult to feel connected, yourself to feel connected with those who you care about, and for those that you care about to feel connected to you. So be aware of what's happening in your body when you're feeling that fight or flight response and perhaps refer back to the first video I made about ways that you can ground yourself, anchor yourself during this time. So keep those strategies in mind. Our oldest response to threat is that shutdown response. 
And that's where emotionally we're feeling dissociated, perhaps a sense of numbness, perhaps a sense of hopelessness about the situation that we're experiencing. In either of these two defensive responses, the fight or flight response or the shut down response, our immune system is negatively affected. We've got reduced immune functioning that's happening in those states. So the topic of this talk is about the importance of staying connected with family and friends. Think about ways that you can stay connected with family and friends. This might be the time to broaden your skills using technology, using your media. I know a lot of people are using Skype or messenger videoing for the first time. People are having coffees together on video. It's important for your physical and emotional health to find ways of doing this. So what I do suggest to you is to become more aware of what's happening in your body. And if you notice yourself feeling that sense of shutdown, that sense of numbness, that sense of dissociating from the world, notice that, take it as feedback. If you notice yourself in the fight or flight response, those feelings of anxiety, heart pumping, again, take that as feedback and take action to bring yourself back up into that social connection mode of operating, that sense of safety within your body. And a very good way of doing that is to find positive social connections in your life. Just because we can't physically be with people at this time doesn't mean that we stop connecting meaningfully for, with people. So find ways to structure that into your life. Again, have a look at that first video. I've got some ideas there about anchoring to keep yourself in the present. That will also help our bodies move up to that um, social connection state. Take care and stay well.